Many of our favorite engine builders and other custom car builders use ARP fasteners. And we decided that after all this time of seeing them on so many really cool cars and really great engines, we wanted to know how they were made. So we came to Southern California to take a tour of their facility to learn how ARP makes all their fasteners. Chris Rashke has worked at ARP for years, so we knew he was the right guy to take us on a tour of the manufacturing facility. The first room that Chris took us to is filled with enormous, loud machines. So this is where the bolt process begins. So Chris, now we're in the world where I start getting excited. I love these big machines. I love watching them work. And what's impressive to me is this huge machine is making this little bitty bolt. So tell me what these machines are called first. These are bolt makers. They're cold formers. Um, they take the raw coil, the raw material, they straighten the wire, and then through a series of uh, heads, they shape the head onto the bolt. Okay, so in this room, um, you're actually, I guess, starting the formation of the bolt. Yes, this is the very beginning. You can take the raw coil and, and it starts to form the fastener or stud. I noticed uh, the coils are different color sizes, textures. Is each machine doing a different shape and size of bolt or length, or what, what's the determination? Well, the, the main thing that's different about the machines is the size. There's quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, half, seven sixteenths, five eighths cold formers here and cold okay. headers. Okay. Uh, we use different wire size for different bolts. Right. The different colors of stuff that you see on the wire is uh, the wire that's copper coated is probably a stainless or an A286. Okay. Uh, the coppers there to lubricate the dies of the machine oh, so okay. they don't stick. Stainless galls. Right. So if we're doing a chrome ollie like 8740, we just put lubricant or oil on the wire when it goes to the machine. Okay. But if it is a stainless material, then we got to put some copper coating on it. What are those steps? What's happening? Um, it, it, there's a cutoff station, an upset, or a series of upsets, and then the final blow is where it fills out the head, stamps the part, depending on what the application is or what part we're making, okay. it, it'll put the ARP stamp on at that station. But we bring in the, the most highest quality uh, semen defect free material. So we're starting with a higher quality material than, than a commercial house is going to use. Okay. And, and, and then after we do the heading operations, uh, we'll either age the material to the right hardness or we'll do a heat treat process. There's certain jobs that require a real constant inspection or, or uh, spot check. But really, once the machines are running, uh, the employee should or the operator should have time to do a spot check every you know, 50 or 100 parts or you know, 500 parts, depending on what they're making, to make sure the tolerances are within our specs. Most uh, commercial and aerospace houses don't hold the tolerance that we need to hold here for race car parts. For hot header, uh, we do that process if we have a part that is very long, too long for the, the, to get into the cold header. We have about a six inch throat. Uh, in, the, in the coal heading up machines, and, and so we have an 8-inch part or a 10-inch part, we use the hot header. And the hot heading is we do an induction heat on the head of the part, and then we put it in the machine, and in one operation, one hit, the, the press will come down and it'll shape whatever head, if it's a big balancer bolt like for an LS engine, mm -hmm. or if we're broaching a, a, a broach into the end of the long stud, it all does that in one process, one hit. Next, the bolts are heat treated for optimum strength and durability. This is a heat treat facility. Uh, the, the material comes over, the, the, the headed parts come over from the heading shop, mm -hmm. and they come in here and they get a heat treat or an aging process. Depends on what the, the job card calls out. How hot is the heat? <laughs> uh, it varies. We're, we're cooking some stuff right now about 1550. Okay. And um, how long do they make? Uh, that's also in the recipe for the heat treat. So sometimes it, it, it can be an hour and a half, and sometimes it calls for an eight-hour uh, aging process. You never know. Okay, and um, depending on the size of the bolt and the length and all that is also what determines how long they're in there and material. Okay. Yeah, different materials require different different ways to process the heat in heat treat. All of our products are heat treated before thread roll. This is an LS1 dampener bolt. It's been hot headed. Okay. Uh, and and it, it's a really big blank. Now it'll go into the furnace and, and, and start the heat treat process. Okay. Now what I know from those type of bolts uh, from the factory, they're a one-time use bolt. Yeah, that'd be a torque to yield fastener. Most of the, most of the cars today are manufactured torque to yield fasteners. Uh, this part is reusable. Uh, we always say, as long as the, the threads are in good shape, the wrenching's in good shape, you haven't yielded the part, you haven't over-torqued it or stressed it in some fashion that 
that uh, could have hurt the part, it is reusable. How do you know if you've yield, yielded the part? Um, one method is if the part has uh, kept its original free length. Uh, bolts are like a spring when, they're, when they tension. You want them to be tensioned, the part will, uh, will uh, stretch, and, and when you release the tension, the bolts should come back to its original length.